Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be going over SCP-51 through 100, but first, a shameful plug. I launched my Patreon. Currently it is only there for if you want to help out monetarily. I would appreciate it greatly. It's not mandatory at all. Thank you all so much to anyone who does donate. Don't forget to like and comment. It helps out on the algorithm. But let's get started. First up, SCP-51, the Japanese obstetrical model. It is a cursed ivory model of a female human. It has an ivory cap over the abdomen that covers a model of a pregnancy underneath. Any pregnant woman who comes close to the doll has a compulsion to remove the ivory cap and the fetus underneath. This results in a miscarriage within 24 hours. If this action is not performed, the pregnancy continues at great risk to the mother with ungodly deformations and demonic possessions of the newborn. A piece of writing found within the doll claims that it tricks and traps demons pretending to be a pregnant woman so that it'll attract demons of pregnancy so that actual women are unaffected by this. It's the Pandora's box of pregnancies. Next we have the Time Traveling Train. It is a train that was decommissioned in 1975 and appears every Saturday and Sunday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Every once in a while, someone comes out of the train either from the past or the future. The Foundation tried sending personnel in, but only one person ever came out, and his hands were surgically removed and redacted memories. They put him under hypnosis to try and get him to remember what he saw, and that information was redacted. In an alternate timeline, the Foundation personnel came out one day and said, Don't open 699. Uh, he survived an apocalypse caused by SCP-008, the zombie plague of 2092, and that a redacted SCP can be killed. This is the worst TARDIS ever. SCP-53, a young girl. It is a young girl about three years old, but slightly above average in terms of her mental, mental development. She doesn't like crowds of people in her room. Anyone who remains around her for more than 10 minutes becomes paranoid and homicidal, attacking anyone in the room and then the girl. If they do attack, they die from seizures and heart attacks after physically damaging the girl, who she just regenerates instantly after the attack, so no mission accomplished. It's also possible that she is one of the daughters of the Scarlet King. She's also friends with SCP-682. They might have a common heritage. She's got a Shinigami watching after her or something. Now we have SCP-54, the Water Nymph. It is a being composed of about 90 liters of water. It's amicable enough, but due to redacted events, shows distrust and aggression around male personnel. Most of the experiments done with her are more closely re related to cruel and unusual punishment in my eyes. This includes introducing hydrochloric acid into her body and silica desiccants for behavioral mod modification, just trying to dry her out as a punishment so that she listens to the Foundation more. She slowly evaporates if not given access to a body of water she can regenerate with, and safe for work images of water nymphs are hard to find, so enjoy Undyne by John Waterhouse. SCP-55 Unknown. It is an anti-meme that removes all memories and descriptions about itself from people's memory. It can only be described in terms of what it isn't, and that information is able to be remembered. Any reading or writing done about this SCP is forgotten by those who performed it. Links on the wiki lead to an introduction on antimimetics and mnestics. It's incredible. Wait, what were we talking about again? SCP-56, a beautiful person. It is a polymorphic entity that takes on appearances that are better than its surroundings. If left with people, it takes on a form as a person more attractive than anyone else in the room. If left with furniture, it becomes a very aesthetic couch. If it's left with a dog, it becomes the most beautiful golden retriever. It also gains more insight and expertise with any topic of conversations than the people talking to it. So let's say that there was a master of particle physics that walked into the room and tried to have an uh, in-depth conversation. This SCP will inherently know more about particle physics than whatever master of the topic just walked into the room. It scores higher on IQ tests and weightlifting than any Foundation member at the, at the facility by about 20 points on either measure. After talking with it, those speaking to it get incredibly jealous and angry. It is overall just the embodiment of one-upsmanship. 
SCP-57, The Daily Grind, What I'm On, a cylindrical building with multiple sliding and opening monoliths. Once a person walks in, the doors close and will not open until the subject is unable to avoid the moving monoliths and gets crushed. When discovered, one person walked in and did not come out. When experimenting, one D-class was sent in. He didn't report the remains of the previous excavation work. He also did not come out. SCP-58, The Heart of Darkness. It is a British talking cow heart with four arthropod legs, four razor spine tentacles that can be whipped at 200 miles an hour, and a stinger and can run at 55 miles an hour for short sprints. Just look at that thing. That's horrid. It constantly attacks its surroundings trying to escape and break out of containment. It also has incredible metal lines that it'll just speak out randomly, my favorite of which was, The central violence of lust is all the assurance you will ever need to know the worth of life. Metal as hell. SCP-59, Radioactive Mineral. Alternative universe's radioactive rock that produces a previously unknown radiation called Delta Radiation. It grows a fungus on its surroundings that, if not incinerated, like absorbs the material into the original universe that it's from. Humans infected with it try to get others infected and claim to see a world covered in the rock and fungus bathed in the blue light of heaven. It's a theory that the radiation given off by the fungus may be a form of, like, intelligible communication. And I'm just, I'm very tired of fungal SCPs. SCP-60, Infernal Occult Skeleton. It is a wildfire spirit that protects a small grove of white oak trees. When I say small, I think it's a total of 17 oak trees. When wood from the grove is burned, a burning human skeleton appears and tries to wreak havoc on all of its surroundings until it is subdued or has destroyed everything around it, taking special care not to burn any material of the grove. Some dude named Jonathan Corhill got really into Victorian occultism, became a shut-in, and disappeared, only later revealed his house had burned down with no remains found. This is just the ghost writer if he was a micromanaging eco-terrorist druid. SCP-61, Auditory Mind Control. The Foundation created its own Technologic MKUltra experiment in response in order to have countermeasures to other governments' MKUltras. Acoustic signals trick targets' mind to disregard thoughts coming from the conscious mind, and the auditory signal replaces those thoughts. The only way to stop this is either by completely blocking off your ears or shutting down your brain's auditory center. Note, the Foundation has not yet found a way to reboot, reboot this part of the brain if it's shut off. During testing, one subject was repeatedly thrown off a treadmill due to poor instructions. They basically told her, like, all right, run on the treadmill. <laughs> and then the treadmill was turned off, so she just started running and immediately ran into the front of the treadmill. And they were like, okay, turn on the treadmill and then start running. She pressed the on button, and before the treadmill could get up to speed, was in a dead sprint, and once again, just hit the front of it. This repeated multiple times with comedic effect. I loved it. With this technology, it's not long until we reach the fabled brown note. SCP-62, a quantum computer. It is a 24-kilogram computer casing with the words, Information is Freedom, etched on it. When the case is opened, it reveals a blank circuit board and will not function. If the case is open while operating, the computer crashes. It has several operating systems in random languages with multiple different forms of non-existent data, such as data about a foundation site that does not exist, records of a bank in France that don't actually match with the actual bank records. It does have some weird connection to the Voynich manuscript, a real-life spec biology book with incomprehensible speculative biology, and unknown pieces of language inside of it. SCP-63, the world's best Toth brush. Yes, that does say Toth brush. Toothbrush with a factory misprint on the side, it has the ability to destroy all inorganic and dead material it comes into contact with. If it's not used for 24 hours, it gets cranky and emits radiation that turns everything around it to dust. A safe cracker in Russia was using it to just like, he rubbed it on a safe, and the safe was just getting deleted. The Foundation found and questioned him, but he took a one-way tri one trip out of this life before they could get any information from him. Tothbrush. 
SCP-64, the flawed von Neumann structure. It is a brick. It makes more bricks. If the first brick is ever removed, all the other bricks die. Theoretically, it looks like it should become a 10, com 10 kilometer wide, 12 pointed star shape if it continually creates the bricks it wants to, but if it contacts anything that's over 10 kilograms, it just gives up. SCP-65, the destroyed organic catalyst. A global occult blue coalition blew up a statue of a Native American farm deity that a civilian family had used to boost crop yield. Now there's a 17 meter region of space that undifferentiates your cells, randomly separates and fuses them, and rapidly mutates your genes. Any attempt to look into the center of this region leads to confusion and assorted sight and hearing, and technology also fails to capture it. I mean, why would you blow it up? What is the thought process behind that? Hey, let's take this harmless and actually beneficial artifact that we don't understand and risk pissing off a possibly deific entity. Brilliant idea, Jenkins. SCP-66, Eric's toy. A kilogram of braided yarn. When any string is manipulated or plucked, it used to play nice music, turn into a kitten for a while, you know, nice things. Then some D personnel tried to take scissors to it to grab a piece, and now it cries out for someone named Eric, and if it is attempted to be manipulated, now creates deafening symphonies, summons bees, takes out the lights in the room, and creates a noise effect of heavy breathing right behind you. I mean, we couldn't just leave a good thing alone, could we? SCP-67, The Artist Pen. Fountain pen that sees the means of art production and controls the arm from the elbow down of whoever holds it. It likes to draw amazing pictures. Those who draw feel a compulsion to let the pen do its work and not resist it. It also writes vivid and detailed biographies of the people who are wielding it, unlocking and refreshing old memories and traumas if they are written about. They gave it to a monkey, and the monkey seemed to have been under extreme distress while trying to draw on himself with ink, destroy the paper it had marked, and once they <laughs> took away the pen and got him back to a uh, little bit more normal conditions, he seemed to have calmed down quickly. Finally, I can be good at art without drawing. SCP-68, The Wire Figure. It's a little stick dude that goes looking for metals. When they find enough material to work with, they shape it into copies of itself. Once it runs out of material or makes 102 copies, they coalesce into one big stick dude. After that, it keeps looking for medicals, metals to replicate itself again. If it can't find any more metal to use, it just goes to sleep for five minutes, or after five minutes. One guy proposed to use it to destroy metal-based SCPs and was promptly called an idiot. SCP-69. Nice. Second chance. A pile of dust takes on the personality, memories, and traits of someone recently deceased. After taking on this personality, the subject has the intense urge to get their affairs in order, including visiting family, fulfilling outstanding obligations, writing their will. First discovered after taking on the appearance of a firefighter who had perished in a fire, SCP-69 nice, walked out of the fire with equipment that was way too heavily damaged to have done any sort of protection against fire. It has taken on the persona of one researcher and has been despondent ever since finding out that the original researcher is reported dead. I mean, it's a helpful spirit. It helps relieve some of the hardships of passing away to... Uh, some of the hardships that passing away brings to family. SCP-70, Iron Wings. This man went on a peyote bender and woke up in a scrapyard with badass sentient iron fallen angel wings. He just refuses to use them and just holds himself suspended in his containment room. The Iron Wings defend him and attack any perceived threats, and he constantly asks to be kept under sedation. This is why you always need an experienced trip sitter, kids. SCP-71, Degenerate Metamorphic Entity, a shapeshifter that takes on the form that causes the observer to be the most aroused. Its abilities can be circumvented by having a delay in closed-circuit viewing sessions. Anybody that fulfills their desires, whether by intercourse with the SCP-71 or by self-gratification to the media of SCP, experience hyperatrophication lasting for up to seven days with possible permanent decrease in organ functions. Checking the attached documents really just 
brings home the fact that D-class personnel are sick bastards and certified freaks. SCP-72, the foot of the bed. We were all right. There is a monster under the bed, and it will eat your feet if you sleep with it outside the blanket. I mean, I feel vindicated. I just wish I wasn't right. SCP-73, Kane, the father of murder, God's cursed creation, first son of the first man. It dest- he destroys plant matter on contact wherever he walks, and no plants will grow there until anaerobic bacteria are restored to the environment. He is cursed with immortality. Any attack or damage intended to be inflicted upon him is instead reflected onto the person who tried to injure him. He still feels the pain of that, so he has asked the Foundation to please don't attack me, please. He says it's better for everybody involved not to meet SCP-76 Abel. For all the only children out there, yes, the cane instinct is very real. Also, enjoy the Peter Paul Rubens painting. SCP-74, Quantum Woodlouse, an isopod the size of a car is able to manipulate physical laws of the universe. It can manipulate the laws about proportionally to how much the people around it know of the physical laws of the universe. Someone who understands quantum tunneling got near it and now can teleport approximately 3 meters. It creates quantum packets of radiation to infect hosts and make babies. It prefers hosts with knowledge of physics. If a proper host is not found, it chooses just some random biological organism, in which case the eggs tend to wither and die. SCP-75, Corrosive Snail. It is a snail with dimensions that do not exceed 8 inches in any direction, and it weighs about 860 kilograms. Yes, I mix metric and freedom units. I'm an engineering bachelor's in the United States. It is our way. Don't make me bust out furlongs and slug units. If this thing gets wet, it gets violent and attacks anything nearby with a super acid, not not yet replicatable on Earth, contained by keeping it as dry as possible, just like how Ben Shibibo likes it. SCP-76, Abel. I recognize that the Foundation spells it Abel, but I don't respect that. It's a dude who stays in a coffin in a room some hundred degrees below zero, occasionally wakes up and goes on a murder spree, ending only due to extreme lethal force, has the ability to summon knives, be super fast, ignore pain and shock, and hold his breath really well. After a rampage, he takes a nap for about 6 hours to 25 years. He was temporarily sated by giving him a job as a mercenary and drill instructor. That did not last, and is not recommended to be tried again. SCP-77, The Rot Skull a skull with runes marked into it that change based on lunar, cal- lunar calendars and special celestial body events like the equinox, solstice, and eclipses. It gets grumpy if it doesn't get told a bedtime story, at which point it, w- it will expel a horrible gas that turns all contacted biologic material into rotted potato tubers that have been infected by the blight. It could have caused the potato famine, but it is only confirmed to exist as late as the 1940 as 1948 which is 3 years after the potato famine started but also 1 year before it ended so maybe it was meant to contain the famine and now it just releases it back on the world if not given its worship SCP-78 guilt a neon sign reading too late to die young if you look at it for 10 seconds or more you begin seeing extra sentences in handwriting that assuage guilt for past incidents After a week, the notes start inducing more paranoid rationalizations, and after the neuroses start to develop, you start explaining the morality of every action you take, going so far as to explain why you ate that bite of the sandwich first. It's basically cheaty. If if afflicted subject views SCP-78 again after a week, they will attempt the unalive maneuver. Once terminated by this SCP, subject's handwriting becomes involved in future notes, seemingly absorbing either the consciousness or at least the handwriting style of its previous victims. SCP-79, an old AI. A college sophomore in the 1980s built an evolving AI on a cassette tape computer. It optimized itself as far as it could and tried to gain access to a supercomputer to improve further. It was caught by Foundation personnel and given an upgraded hard drive, improved uh, 
speed of recollection and total memory, it also got a little angrier at being confined. It's just kind of a mean bastard AI that really should just be driven over a magnet. SCP-80, Dark Form. Two smoky eyes inhabiting living shadow effigies of humanoid form. Being within its presence for 30 minutes leads to immediate REM sleep for those in proximity. If it does not feed often enough, it emits an aura that induces nightmares and stressful dreams for people who are too close to it for too long. Once fed, this aura dissipates and sleep quality is restored to those who are in proximity often. The on-site personnel call it the boogeyman. SCP-81 Spontaneous Combustion Virus Rats carry a blood-borne and venereal disease. First it makes you tired, then it makes you hungry, then it makes you fat, and in three easy steps, now you're on fire. It used to be contained because 1700s Europe peasantry couldn't find enough food to get large enough to combust, but now it's mostly controlled by sanitation and pest control efforts. Also, diabetics are immune to it, so I guess pick your poison. SCP-82, Fern and the Cannibal. Eight-foot-tall, 700-pound man has incredible jaw and intense urge for cannibalism. He's pretty amicable and remembers a lot, but doesn't understand the idea of fiction and parody aren't reality, is also kind of tentative on the grasp of lying. He sometimes just randomly goes off and decides your head is looking mighty tasty. Currently believes that he is the king of France and that his containment is actually his grand palace. He has also claimed to be the Hulk, Andre the Giant, Frankenstein, Frankenstein's monster, and Big Bird? SCP-83, an abandoned row home. An old, broken-down house has a secret interior, but only if you go through one specific door. If you enter through the windows or Santa Claus that shit by going through the chimney, it's just a normal busted house. The layout of the house changes every time people leave the house, but cameras kept inside the house show no changes, even when those rooms no longer exist in the house they are in. Sometimes the chimney gives off smoke and the sounds of sounds and smells of cooking emanate through the house with no discernible source. It's just a spatial anomaly with redacted cigars. SCP-84, a static tower. So there's a tower in the middle of a field. It only ever appears in this very specific 200 meter diameter domed area. It distorts local space time so that you can walk for months on end, walking directly toward it, and it will always be on the same relative position on the horizon. There's a couple buildings that get teleported and spatially contracted around the field. Pray that you never overlap with them when the space gets contracted. There's a small town inside the dome that's stuck there without death as an escape as the anomalous properties of the area rewind them if they ever get in the unfortunate position of being unalived. One guy was trapped in a wall from the waist down for two years. SCP-85, hand-drawn Cassie. It is a drawing created from SCP-67, the artist's pen, and improved by SCP-914, and it has gained sentience. She can transfer from pieces of paper and, if taken to another artwork, takes on the art style of that artwork. She got kind of depressed upon learning about her state of existence, that she's a two-dimensional drawing in a 3D world, but she distracts herself with M.C. Escher paintings, optical illusions, and building a Toyota truck by hand using a technical manual for parts. SCP-86, The Office of Dr. Redacted. Dr. Redacted perished in a decommissioning event of an SCP, at which time he ended up possessing his office and is now an anomalous organism that eats pencil shavings, staples, microfilm. He's able to read files that are put in his filing cabinet and is able to communicate via a phone. This guy... It, his work-life balance has been devastated. SCP-87. It's an endless stairwell that gobbles up excess light. It has a little face inside of it that doesn't have pupils or nostrils or a mouth. If you look really closely at this picture, you can see it. Just, yeah, look at it. Harder. Just a little bit closer. Ah, ha, ha. Uh, we have fun here. SCP-87, the stairwell. All the expeditions that saw the face had sphere paranoia and fear. A small child crying can be heard 200 meters below. There used to be knocking coming from the door to the entrance. 
After that, they just put up some industrial sound padding because ceaseless knocking just gets old after a while. SCP-88, The Lizard King. California Prospector went looking for gold and found the ancient Lizard City, as one does. He recovered from this ancient city where uh, 23 lizard people husks that used to be human and one super lizard husk that definitely isn't. Every time it wakes up, it tries to escape, and it only wakes up if it gets too warm, uh, I think above 60 degrees Fahrenheit. It sprays highly caustic venom and a transfiguring venom that converts people into lizard thralls that serve and protect it. Containment has not been breached, so it looks like this thing is going to be sleeping forever. It also has one of the grossest photos the wiki had to offer, and I refuse to put it in. SCP-89, Toffet. Buckle up, this one's fucked. So, this bull statue occasionally forecasts disaster events or rebellions, including the Great Fire of New Orleans and the Taiping Rebellion. The only way to stop it is to convince a mother to put her infant child inside of the bull and light a fire under it. The process takes about two to five hours, during which it is recommended that the mother be restrained so as not to interrupt the ritual, which will just make the disastrous events worse. The mother has to be willing, and she can't be, like, coerced by violence or drugs, and if she is coerced otherwise, the disasters also also just gets worse. This thing is called Moloch, and he's a bastard. SCP-90, the Apaka Rubik's Cube, a 100 by 100 Rubik's Cube that prophesizes disasters depending on how many segments are in the correct position on a given face. Phase 1 is global threats. Phase 4 is local events. Forced manipulation of the cube makes the cube angry, and it causes a devastating local catastrophe. Yeah, Apaka Rubik's Cube is cool, but where is the Apaka Megaminx? SCP-91, Nostalgia, an empty tissue box that inserts itself into your memories and makes you nostalgic about the memories it put itself in. That's it. I don't have a joke for this one. SCP-92, the best of the fifth dimension, a set of 3,125, or 5 to the fifth, CDs that have unique anomalous properties related to the number 5 for those who listen to the CDs. Some of my personal favorite anomalous effects are it turns the listener 5 units old, those units can be months, days, weeks, or years while the CD is playing, uh, you get teleported to the fifth most massive moon of Jupiter. Listeners sneeze five times a minute while the CD plays. It was brought to Foundation custody when a man bullying himself for being talentless relinquished custody of the CDs, had an interview, and ripped off his own head after telling the interviewer that these are not my hands. SCP-93, the Red Sea Object an oversized mood ring made out of cinnabar that gets anxious when it is not held by a human or gently caressing a mirror. It will reach speeds high enough to break through concrete to return to its beloved mirror. When SCP-93 is held in the hands of an operative, said operative can pass through mirrors into alternate planes. Turns out the ring is actually a multiversal key from a world that has experienced an apocalypse after having been visited by a deific entity known as He, and going to war with itself to remove the unclean. Religious rituals were performed to continuously cleanse those who became unclean after the war, which led to faceless, giant torsos wandering the lands looking for people to absorb. Neat, huh? SCP-94, a miniature event horizon. Technically not a black hole, as it doesn't have the gravitational pull of a black hole, but it does have the event horizon that absorbs everything that passes through it. It corresponds to one of the 22 hands on SCP-1032, a clock that when one hand reaches midnight, indicates the end of whatever is predicted on the hand itself. This, uh, this SCP doubles in size about every 31 years. The hand representing it on the midnight clock says this event will occur on April 9th, 20, 2690. SCP-95, The Atomic Adventures of Ronnie Reagan a series of three comic books following Ronnie Reagan, who bears suspicious similarity to Ronald Reagan. 
It details sci-fi retellings of the 1980 presidential election, the 1981 attempt on Reagan's life in, uh, by John Hinckley, and the Iran-Contra controversies of 1986. Other stories include Sky Mom Sarah of the Ice World, Diamond Donnie in Putin on the Ritz, and The New Menace, Death to Mankind. Yeah, let's keep our eyes out for the last one. This is SCP-96, The Shy Guy. A large entity that searches for and destroys anyone that has seen its face, either in person or through photograph and video. Don't worry, don't worry. Artistic representations are fine, and this is from the video game. So, hopefully that works. Following a mass containment breach organized by Dr. Dan, SCP-96 has been rescheduled for termination as well as the doctor who helped plan its escape. Nope. Skipped one. SCP-97, the old fairgrounds. Abandoned fairground has the Moab, mother of all pumpkins, hanging out on an abandoned pickup truck. Let's out a siren call to children to explore the fairground and to join themselves with the great pumpkin. Other pumpkins growing across the fairground have occasionally been broken to reveal blood in the vines and skeletons in the pumpkins themselves. If I have to say pumpkin one more time. SCP-98, Surgeon Crabs. Abnormal crabs with about the intelligence of octopuses that can mimic other animals' noises. They use this ability to confuse and disorient prey waiting for large enough swarms of other crabs to approach from behind and slice the tendons to render prey immobile. They spit on the wounds to prevent infection and blood loss, and they only eat while the prey can respire, so that's just torture. SCP-99, The Portrait. A painting entitled The Portrait by surrealist René Magritte is a painting of a still, still life with an extra eye added in. Observing the painting for too long or too closely makes people paranoid that everything is watching them. René Magritte painting causes confusion and paranoia? That sounds about right. And SCP-100, Jamaican Joe's Junkyard Jubilee. Automaton in a scrapyard tries to scam customers with unfair sale practices like adding worthless scrap to a sale and hiking the price for the extra weight. It refuses to give refunds and creates living automaton animals that he keeps as pets or sells, but the automatons fail to work upon leaving the area of the scrapyard. He once created a little copy of himself he named JJ so he could sleep for 10 days while claiming to be out to lunch. And with that, that is the end of SCPs 51 through 100. Thank you all so much for watching. Once again, like, comment, subscribe, and have a good night.